Hello everyone, happy MLK Day. Today is the day that the nation pauses so that we can reflect, so that we can celebrate and memorialize the life, legacy, and the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Today should be a day of national service so that we can immortalize his words of wisdom about love and hope and his vision about pursuing justice for everyone who lives in this country. We can still do that we, even though we feel at times that that void needs to be filled. The reality is that when you see that everything that's around us, all of the protests, the pandemic, what we saw last week in the nation's capital, more than ever, Dr. Martin Luther King's teachings and his words need to ring true to each and every single one of us. One of his quotes was that at the center of every nonviolence is the principle of love. Love will get us through this, but we can only do it together. So once again, happy MLK Day and enjoy this program. I know that we can't be together as we normally are at Trinity Church, but we can all continue to celebrate in our own way and to pay homage to the memories and the inspiration that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave us all. God bless you and I'll see you soon. Hi everyone, this is Senator Chuck Schumer. And I want to thank my good friend, Borough President Ruben Diaz, for inviting me to bring greetings to all of you on this very special day. Ruben is such a blessing to this community, and we all pray that God gives him strength in the days to come as he continues to take on the many challenges facing the Bronx and our country right now. As you know, I love coming to your MLK celebration every year. Now, this year's a little different. I'm not in person. I'm virtual but I'm glad we can still get together to commemorate the life of one of the most, most amazing men in American history, Martin Luther King Jr. My brothers and sisters, today is a very special day. It's no coincidence that MLK Day is the only day, the only day on our calendar dedicated to a single individual. We have Mother's Days for all the mothers and Father's Day for all the fathers and July 4th for all the patriots and Veterans Day for all the veterans, but only one day for one man, MLK Day. And that's because of who Dr. King was. Singular, exceptional, unique, and wonderful. He had the courage and strength to lift upon his broad shoulders a vast mirror. He picked that mirror up and with his eloquence, with his intelligence, with his faith, he forced America to look into that mirror. And when America looked in, they didn't like what they saw, and that began our slow, long road to equality and justice. He unflinchingly exposed our worst impulses, and in doing so, he inspired better angels of our nature. And because of that, he made America a better place, just as he made each and every one of us a better person. That's why, when I was a young congressman in the early 80s, I fought against the bigots in Congress and successfully got Congress to make MLK a federal holiday. Now, as we saw a couple of weeks ago at the Capitol, there is still plenty of people out there who wield their bigotry, their ignorance, like a cudgel against those who disagree with them politically. And we know that so much of this was racism. So in honor of Dr. King's legacy, and in recognition of that growing threat to our nation, I feel it's my responsibility, it's all our responsibilities, to never avert our gaze from the injustices that continue to plague our society and that Dr. King first forced us to look at. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed just how much work we have left to fulfill Dr. King's vision of a just and equal society. This awful disease has impacted us all, but it is precisely the poor, the people of color, the ignored, the downtrodden who have been hurt most. That's why at every step during this crisis, I have fought for direct federal aid to support communities of color that are all too often left behind. I fought to bring money to our small businesses, our nonprofits, and our churches. And it is why I am fighting for an Economic Justice Act that would direct an additional $435 billion, more than ever, ever before, beyond COVID relief, in short and long-term investments in public health, child care, infrastructure, night centers, after-school centers in every community so kids have a good place to hang out, and so much more. Job creation, new jobs, good-paying jobs. 
all to address the systemic racism in our society. Now, in a couple of days, America will observe the inauguration of my good friends, Joe Biden, a steady battle-tested leader with integrity, and Kamala Harris, the first black person and first woman to ascend to the vice presidency. The Senate will seat John Ossoff, the young protege of the late Congressman John Lewis, and Lewis's former pastor, Raphael Warnock, who was born while Georgia was still represented by staunch segregationists. I work hard to persuade him to run, and America is so glad he has won. And with them, the Senate will turn to Democratic control under the first Jewish majority leader in American history, the son, as I am, of an exterminator and a homemaker descended directly from victims of the Holocaust. I'm humbled. I look forward to working closely alongside all of you to make progress on so many important issues. We can't just patch over the wounds that the twin crises of COVID and Trump have exposed. We have to go further, further, by identifying and addressing the systematic challenges we face as a nation. Racial injustice, economic equality, creeping authoritarianism. Even as we commemorate this historic and hopeful change in government, we must not lose sight of the fact that the vicious bigotry exposed by the last four years has not at all disappeared. And we must redouble our commitment to stamping it out once and for all. Now, if we can do that, then one day in the future, hopefully not too far in the future, the solemnity that we mark Martin Luther King Jr. Day with today will not be necessary. One day in the future, we'll celebrate this holiday with parades and laughter for the victories we've achieved over inequality in America. One day. Thanks for letting me join you to honor one of the greatest Americans who have ever walked the ground in this country. May he continue to be a stirring example for all of us in the days ahead. Hello, this is State Controller Tom DiNapoli. I thank Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. and Senior Pastor Naomi Tyler Lloyd for inviting me to join you for the Trinity Baptist Church's celebration of the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Each January across our nation, we pause to recognize Dr. King's impactful life and the power of his message. With inspiration from Dr. King, America has made great strides on equality and justice since he was assassinated in 1968. But in so many ways, Dr. King's dream remains a work in progress and presents an unfinished agenda that challenges all of us. Over the past year, the reckoning that followed the brutal killing of George Floyd and the loss of too many black lives over too many years confronts us with the reality that much work remains to fight racism and inequality. As we continue that work in our communities, in our workplaces, and in our homes, let us draw strength from Dr. King's call for unity, for truth, for opportunity, and for justice. Dr. King once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? During these unprecedented and difficult times, let us be guided by those words. Each of us can play a part in making Dr. Martin Luther King's dream a reality. I wish you a hopeful and peaceful King Day celebration. I'm Carl Hasty, Speaker of the New York State Assembly. I'm sorry we cannot be together in person this year, but I want to thank Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. for putting together this virtual celebration in lieu of our usual service led by Reverend Dr. Naomi Tyler Lloyd at Trinity Baptist Church to commemorate the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In 1963, Dr. King warned that there would be no rest or tranquility in our nation until equality and justice was realized for all people. He also said, change does not roll on the wheels of inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. These sentiments are as true and relevant now as they were almost 60 years ago. Over the last several years, the American people have fought for change throughout the country and brought about that change in the last election. In response, we saw the attack on our nation's capital, the culmination of the last four years of the outgoing administration 
and Washington's platform of xenophobia, inequality, and division. As we begin a new year and a new administration takes office in Washington, the Assembly majority will continue to fight for progress that will improve the lives right here in our communities. We will continue to fight for equity for all New Yorkers. This year, as we mitigate the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, our session priorities include working to ensure equity in healthcare, education, criminal justice, and housing while working to rebuild our economy. The importance of being the first African-American speaker is a great honor, but I hope it will not be the last. I wanna leave a legacy of great work that has a positive impact on the lives of New Yorkers for years to come. I've often said that race does not end with our successful election to public office. We have merely picked up the baton that was carried by our forefathers and it's our responsibility to carry it for the next generation. As we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. King, we must continue to challenge intolerance wherever and whenever we see it. We have made great strides, but we know our work is far from over. Hello. It is an honor to celebrate with you the life of a remarkable man, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I wish we could be together as we always have done in the past, but we can take comfort that our bond and his legacy and memory cannot be weakened, not by a pandemic or by any turbulent events unfolding in our nation's capital. If Dr. King were here, I can only imagine how he would be striving to bring us all together. If he had lived, maybe we would never have reached this point. He would have helped unify us as soon as he saw the fraying of our American fabric in the last decade. But he would also be so heartened and encouraged by the fact that Georgia elected its first black U.S. Senator who happens to be a preacher in Dr. King's church. Georgia, King's birthplace, got out the vote in record numbers. How magnificent is that? Today we observe the birthday of the civil rights leader who was jailed for fighting for equality. If it wasn't for his resilience in fighting for equal rights for African Americans, many of us would not be where we are now. I know I wouldn't. Dr. King paved the way for Reverend Raphael Warnock's election as U.S. Senator, for Kamala Harris to be the first black and South Asian woman elected vice president of the United States. And he paved the way for me to become the first black female DA in New York State. He also spoke up for all people, all religions, and immigrants, and he did it through peaceful protests, civil disobedience. Dr. King, along with Freedom Riders and other protesters, stood up for what was right. They were peaceful, but they were met with vicious violence, fire hoses and attack dogs. And we saw on January 6th, protesters who had been misled and incited become brutal rioters attacking our nation's Capitol building in the name of white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and far-right instigators. And they were not crushed by the authorities as King and his fellow civil rights activists were. It was heartbreaking and gut-wrenching. But through it all, we saw the rule of law prevail. The president, Joe Biden, legally elected by the people, will take office this week. And as Dr. King once said, out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. While it's been 52 years since Dr. King was killed, his message resonates with us more strongly than ever. His words and actions remind us that the work we do is important. We strive to pursue justice with integrity, and we will continue doing so to honor his legacy. Happy Dr. King's Day. Thank you very much. Hey, everybody. It's New York State Senator Jamal T. Bailey, and happy Dr. King Day. 
Um, usually on this Monday, what we'd be doing, we'd be in Trinity Baptist Church in my very own district. And we would be there under the leadership of our great borough president, Ruben Diaz Jr. Ruben, thank you so much for everything that you've done for our borough. And thank you for bringing us to fellowship together each and every year at Trinity. While we're not together physically, the spirit of togetherness is something that Dr. King would really want us to do. So thank you for bringing us together in a virtual form. I would be remiss if I didn't say that how much I miss Reverend Dr. David Kelly out of Brooklyn, New York, and how much I think he'd be very pleased with the most recent election results. Both in November and in January, there was something about these elections, something that happened, especially in Georgia. And I find it to be poetic justice that Raphael Warnock, the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, Dr. King's own church, becomes the first black senator, U.S. senator from the state of Georgia. I find that to be poetic justice, much like Dr. King. And Dr. King always asked us, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? It's about service. It's about dedication. It is about understanding that the country and state and city and borough are bigger than just your block. Brothers and sisters, now, now more than ever, especially after we've seen certain issues and concerns happening at the United States Capitol, now is the time for us to continue to band together and bond together. And understand, if you wanna go fast, go alone, but if you wanna go far, you go together. May God bless the, the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And I always like, like to think about this. Dr. King was a mere 39 years old when he passed away, but he left us so much. Please understand what he's left us and don't take it for granted. Happy King Day, everybody. Happy Martin Luther King Day, Trinity Baptist Church. Happy Martin Luther King Day, Senior Pastor Naomi Tyler Lloyd. My name is Council Member Kevin Rowley. And I'm here to wish everyone a happy Martin Luther King Day because Martin Luther King wanted us all to keep the dream going. And as we see today, especially in today's time where we have uncertainties within our community, uncertainties within our police force, uncertainties within our government that has to come back to our communities, we have to keep Martin Luther King's dream going. And I just wanted to give a special shout out to a brother that's from our community who has a special clothing line and production company called Keep the Dream Going Productions. And as you can see the sweatshirt I'm wearing today, I will continue to keep Martin Luther King's dream going and I want you to do the same. Happy Martin Luther King Day and I'll see you on the other side. Peace. Greetings. My name is Naomi Tyler Lloyd and I'm the senior pastor of the Trinity Baptist Church. It's my privilege today to wish you a happy, productive and safe King holiday. Since last year's celebration, our nation has been bombarded and somewhat overwhelmed by the pressing global and national concerns stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic. However, that should not, it must not, dissuade our hope or diminish our work for a just and honest society where all lives are valued and where we can live peaceably among one another. Dr. King's dream still inspires us and it still reminds us that there remains much work to do for the fight for freedom, justice, peace, and unity. So make the best of this day and of all of your appointed days. Keep hoping, keep serving, keep pressing, keep believing. Happy King Day and God bless you.